dear students welcome back now in this session we are going to discuss about sacral plexus the sacral plexus is formed by lumbosacral trunk so l4 and l5 the anterior primary rami of s1 s2 s3 and um, some part of um, anterior primary rami of s4 is also taking part in the formation of plexus okay so the normally the lumbosacral trunk is formed by smaller portion of l4 and the entire l5 forms the lumbosacral trunk and the anterior primary ramus of s4 anterior primary ramus of s4 take part in both sacral as well as coccygeal plexus these are the root values of the sacral plexus and uh, the mainly all ventral primary divisions will form the roots of sacral plexus okay and the next stage of the sacral plexus or each ventral root of l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 are going to divide into divisions one is anterior division and posterior division so the light color here uh, shown in this pic or uh, anterior division and the shaded part you can here uh, see this thick orange color is the posterior uh, divisions so you can see here each uh, nerve root that is ventral root of l4 is divided into anterior and posterior again l5 is divided into anterior posterior s1 you can see anterior posterior s2 also anterior and posterior s3 also anterior and posterior divisions every uh, primary uh, anterior or ventral division of the root is divided into anterior and posterior division this is the second stage of the sacral plexus and then each anterior and posterior divisions will form collateral branches that means uh, some of the branches of uh, these anterior divisions unite to form first collateral branches and again these further unite to form terminal branches so here if you can see there are um, uh, some three branches which are coming from uh, three posterior roots these are called collaterals and finally it forms the and these collaterals unite to form a terminal branch so these are the various stages of the formation of sacral plexus okay so here the nerves forming the plexus so all these nerves forming the plexus converge towards the lower part of the greater sciatic nerve so as we know we have studied in the hip bone that is greater sciatic nerve at the lower part of the greater sciatic nerve where all these nerves are going to converge uh they unite to form a flattened band from the anterior and posterior surface of which the branches of the plexus are given off okay so that means through greater sciatic nerve so all these will come out of the pelvis and which are going to supply the um, gluteal region as well as the lower limb okay now we will see so here uh, we are going to discuss about um, the branches which are arising from 
anterior aspect or ventral components of the spinal nerves okay and um, branches having dorsal components of spinal nerves or posterior components of the spinal nerves that that is the shaded one and uh, light ones are the ventral branches and some of the branches having both dorsal as well as ventral ventral components so we are going to discuss about the branches in three types the first one we are going to discuss is branches having ventral components of the spinal nerves what are the ventral components now we will see so all light color uh, shaded one forms the anterior that is ventral components the first one is nerve to quadratus femoris and gemellus inferior muscles so this nerve is arising from the ventral components of l4 so here you can see l4 okay l5 l4 l5 and also s1 okay l4 l5 and s1 unite to form to give branch to quadratus femoris and gemellus inferior muscle okay so this is the one now okay so here you can clearly see this collaterals this is from l4 and this one is from s5 and another one is the s1 so here the convergence of all these collaterals to form this nerve okay yes next one is nerve to or branch to obturator internus and gemellus superior muscles okay and these nerves or uh, have this nerve getting the ventral components of l5 okay s1 and s2 so here you can find s1 and here s2 so all these three unite to give a nerve to obturator internus and gemellus superior muscles okay so these are the main uh, ventral components and also another important nerve that is called as pudendal nerve so this pudendal nerve is arising from s2 okay s2 s3 and also s4 to form pudendal nerve here you can see this pudendal nerve very clearly yes so here s2 s3 and s4 forming the pudendal nerve okay and some of the branches of s4 and also s2 s3 and s4 gives some branches to pelvic four muscles okay now again we will see here so th these are all the branches having ventral components of the spinal nerves so what are those nerves again here you can see. so one is the branch to quadratus femoris and gemellus inferior muscles which are arising from the ventral components of l4 l5 and s1 another one branch to obturator internus and gemellus superior muscle from l5 s1 and s2 and the pudendal nerve which is arising from the ventral branches only from s2 s3 and s4 forming the pudendal nerve and also this s2 s3 s4 also gives some pelvic splanchanic nerves and uh, s4 will give only s4 will give nerves to levator anae coccygeus and splinter anae externus these are the pelvic floor muscles so here you can see the small branches which are arising from fourth sacral nerve okay now 
now again we will move on to the branches having dorsal components of the spine um, spinal nerves one is nerve to piriformis nerve to piriformis which are arising from only s1 and s2 branches so s1 and s2 will give branch to piriformis and another one is the superior gluteal nerve so here you can find the collaterals from l4 l5 and s1 this unite to give superior gluteal nerve and and also from l5 s1 and s2 will give inferior gluteal nerve okay l5 s1 and s2 only from s1 and s2 it will give branch to piriformis okay so these were the main branches and also it also gives some cutaneous branches from s2 and s3 mainly uh, that is perforating cutaneous branches are going to give on the uh posterior divisions only from s2 and s3 okay and the branches having both dorsal and ventral components next one is branches from both anterior and posterior divisions so one is the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh or posterior femoral cutaneous nerve which arising from dorsal s1 and s2 as well as um, s2 and s3 ventral dorsal so here you can find both the branches both light shaded one as well as um, uh, this uh, light color one okay so what are the branches here dorsal branches of s1 and s2 dorsal branches of s1 and s2 and ventral branches of okay s2 and s3 so here you can find s2 branches as well as s3 branches unite to form this thing that is posterior femoral cutaneous nerve okay yes so and also another very very important nerve that is called as sciatic nerve actually here we can find uh, here there is an uh, distance of differentiation to sh uh, show this nerve actually these two are very much close together okay so that means this forms um, the components dorsal and ventral components what are the dorsal components for sciatic nerve means l4 okay dorsal l4 l5 l1 l4 l5 l4 l5 and s1 okay and also s2 so all the four okay l4 so for differentiation i am going to show this one again l4 l5 s1 and s2 forms the dorsal component of the sciatic nerve which is called as common peroneal nerve okay and then the ventral branches here you can find the tibial branches so ventral branches are l4 again l5 so this here you can find l5 and s1 here you can find s1 and s2 forms the ventral branch of sciatic nerve that is tibial branch so these two together called as sciatic nerve here you can see how this nerve is going to unite here so this is this shaded portion is the common peroneal nerve and this one is the tibial nerve okay like this you can see this sciatic nerve 
okay so these are all the branches which are arising from the sacral plexus in the next session we are uh, going to discuss about with uh, regions of the lower limb thank you